Hello and welcome to our video on depression for our Smart CBT video series. Depression is more than simply feeling unhappy or fed up for a few days. Throughout life, people go through periods of experiencing stress, anxiety or feeling down or lower mood during difficult times. A low mood should improve after a short period of time. When you're depressed, you feel persistently sad for weeks or months rather than just a few days. The good news is that with the right treatment and support, most people with depression can make a full recovery. Depression can affect individuals in various ways and cause a wide variety of symptoms. Some symptoms include lasting feelings of sadness and hopelessness, losing interest in the things you used to enjoy and feeling very tearful. Many people with depression also have symptoms of anxiety. Physical symptoms of depression can include feeling constantly tired or sleeping badly, having no appetite or having no sex drive. You may also have various aches and pains. The symptoms of depression can range from mild to severe. Symptoms of depression persist for weeks or months and are bad enough to interfere with your work, social life, hobbies, relationships and family life. Psychological symptoms of depression include persistent low mood or sadness, feelings of hopeless and helplessness, low self-esteem, feeling tearful, feeling guilt-ridden, feeling irritable and intolerant of others, having no motivation or interest in things, finding it difficult to make decisions, not getting any enjoyment out of life, feeling anxious or worried, and having suicidal thoughts or thoughts of harming yourself. More physical symptoms of depression can include moving or speaking more slowly than usual, changes in appetite or weight, constipation, unexplained aches and pains, a lack of energy, a low sex drive, changes to your menstrual cycle, and disturbed sleep, for example, finding it difficult to fall asleep at night or waking up very early in the morning. The social symptoms of depression can include avoiding contact with your friends and taking part in fewer social activities, neglecting your hobbies and interests, and having difficulties in your home, work or family life. Depression may come on gradually. Many people try to cope with their symptoms without realising its severity. It can sometimes take a friend or family member to suggest something is wrong. Doctors describe this depression by how serious it is. The forms of depression include mild depression having some impact on your daily life, moderate depression having a significant impact on your daily life and severe depression making it almost impossible to get through daily life feeling suicidal and that life is no longer worth living. The majority of suicide cases are linked with mental disorders and most of them are triggered by severe depression. Some warning signs that someone with depression may be considering suicide can include making final arrangements such as giving away possessions, making a will or saying goodbye to friends, talking about death or suicide. This may be a, a direct statement such as I wish I was dead or indirectly using phrases like I think dead people must be happier than us or wouldn't it be nice to go to sleep and never wake up, self-harming behaviours, a sudden lifting of mood, which can mean that a person has decided to attempt suicide and feels better because of this decision. Contact a GP as soon as possible if you are feeling suicidal or are in the crisis of depression. They will be able to help you. If you cannot or do not want to contact a GP, call the Samaritans on 116 123. The helpline is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Please see our website www.smartcbt.co.uk for help in a crisis. If you see any of the above warning signs in a friend or relative, 
get professional help for them. Let them know they are not alone and that you care about them and offer them support in finding other solutions to their problems. If you feel there is an immediate danger, stay with the person or have someone else stay with them and remove all available means of attempting suicide, such as medicine. So what causes depression? Life-changing events, stressful life events, such as bereavement, divorce, illness, losing your job or giving birth can all be a trigger for depression. People with a family history of depression are more likely to experience it themselves. But you can also become depressed for no obvious reason. There is no single cause of depression. Most people take time to to come to terms with stressful events, such as bereavement or relationship breakdown. When these stressful events occur, your risk of becoming depressed is increased if you stop seeing your friends and family and try to deal with your problems on your own. Certain personality traits may make you more vulnerable to depression, such as low self-esteem or being overly self-critical. This may be because of the genes you've inherited from your parents, your early life experiences or both. If someone in your family has had depression in the past, such as a parent or brother or sister, it's more likely that you'll also develop it. Feelings of loneliness caused by things such as becoming cut off from your family and friends can increase your risk of depression. When low in mood, some people try to cope by drinking too much alcohol or taking drugs. This can result in spiral depression. You may have a higher risk of depression if you have a long-standing or life-threatening illness, such as head injuries, underactive thyroid, etc. Treatment for depression can involve a combination of lifestyle changes, talking therapies and medicine. Treatment will be based on whether you have mild, moderate or severe depression. When to seek help. See a GP if you experience symptoms of depression for most of the day, every day, for more than two weeks. Sometimes, when you're depressed, it can be difficult to imagine that treatment can actually help. But the sooner you seek treatment, the sooner your depression will improve. There are no physical tests for a depression, but a GP may examine you and carry out some urine or blood tests to rule out any other conditions that have similar symptoms. The main way a GP will tell if you have depression is by asking you questions about your general health and the way you're feeling is affecting you mentally and physically. Try to be open and honest. Many people with depression benefit by making lifestyle changes, such as getting more exercise, cutting down on alcohol, giving up smoking and eating healthily. Reading a self-help book or joining a support group are also worthwhile. They can help you gain a better understanding about what causes you to feel depressed. Sharing your experiences with others in a similar situation can also be very supportive. If a GP diagnoses you with mild depression, they may suggest waiting a short time to see if it gets better by itself. In this case, you'll be seen again by the GP after two weeks to monitor your progress. This is known as watchful waiting. Exercise. There's evidence that exercise can help depression, and it's one of the main treatments for mild depression. You may be referred to a group exercise class. Self-help. Talking through your feelings can be helpful. You could talk to a friend or relative, or you could ask your GP or local psychological therapy service if there are any self-help groups for people with depression in your area. Mental health apps. You can also find mental health apps and tools to aid self-management. Mild to moderate depression. There are different types of talking therapies for depression, including cognitive behavioural therapy or CBT and counselling. This can be online support, group or individual psychological support. A GP can refer you for talking treatment or you can refer yourself directly to a psychological therapy service, NHS or private. Moderate to severe depression. Antidepressants. Antidepressants are medicines that treat the symptoms of depression. There are many different types of antidepressant. Combination therapy. A GP may recommend that you take a course of antidepressants plus talking therapy, particularly if your depression is quite severe. 
A combination of an antidepressant and CBT usually works better than just having one of these treatments. Talking treatments include cognitive behavioural therapy. CBT aims to help you understand your thoughts and behaviour and how they affect you. CBT recognises that events in your past may have shaped you, but it concentrates mostly on how, you, on how you can change the way you think, feel and behave in the present. It teaches you to overcome negative thoughts and behaviours that are maintaining the depression. The course of treatment usually lasts between 5 and 20 one-hour one-to-one sessions or group CBT. Interpersonal therapy. Interpersonal therapy focuses on your relationships with others and problems you may be having in your relationships, such as difficulties with communication or coping with bereavement and transitions. Psychodynamic psychotherapy. In psychodynamic psychotherapy, a psychoanalytic therapist will encourage you to say whatever is going through your mind. This will help you become aware of hidden meanings or patterns in what you do or say that may be contributing to your problems. Counselling. Counselling is a form of therapy that helps you think about the problems you're experiencing in your life so you can find new ways of dealing with them. Counselling support you in finding solutions to the problems but do not tell you what to do. You can talk in confidence to a counsellor who supports you and offers you practical advice. Grief and depression. It can be difficult to distinguish between grief and depression. They share many of the same characteristics, but there are important differences between them. Grief is an entirely natural response to a loss, while depression is an illness. People who are grieving find their feelings of sadness and loss come and go, but they're still able to enjoy things and look forward to the future. In contrast, people who are depressed and feel sad find it difficult to enjoy anything or be positive about the future. There are different types of depression and some conditions where depression may be one of the symptoms. These include postnatal depression. Sometimes new mothers, fathers or partners develop depression after they have a baby. This is known as postnatal depression and is treated in a similar way to other types of depression. With talking therapies and antidepressants. Bipolar disorder, also known as manic depression. In bipolar disorder, there are spells of both depression and excessively high mood, mania. The depression symptoms are similar to clinical depression, but the bouts of mania can include harmful behaviour such as gambling, going on spending sprees and having unsafe sex. Seasonal affective disorder, also known as winter depression, is a type of depression with seasonal pattern usually related to winter. Prevention includes mindfulness, which involves paying closer attention to the present moment and focusing on your thoughts, feelings, body sensations and the world around you to improve your mental well-being. The aim is to develop a better understanding of your mind and body and learn how to live with more appreciation and less anxiety. Mindfulness is recommended by NICE as a way of preventing depression in people who have three or more bouts of depression in the past. Thank you for watching our video on depression. We hope this has informed you about the condition and what treatment may involve. Stay tuned for future episodes. Thank you and see you next time.